Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC to do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a Lars gas fire hot water boiler. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. This is a natural gas boiler. It's made by Lars Heating Systems. First things first is this whole cover is missing because all the others have that pennant cover and then this cover I guess I left open but you see that's taking in air now there's a fresh air intake here where right there there we have a filter so that's where the fresh air comes in and I guess it goes through this mo motor but now it's taking all the hot air from in here and I did take a look around this cover is nowhere to be found all right it's 108 degrees water and it's set to go to 140 right wait in is 109 out is 108 and set to 140 well could be getting the hot water because it's actually interconnected with this boiler if we look there on the ignition control we just had three beeps check again one two three I mean three flashes and then we have a red light here saying low airflow on the ignition control itself it tells you diagnostic status code so three flashes is ignition lockout so it went off on safety for some reason i know this was just recently replaced so this is definitely good what's going on considering we have that low airflow might not mean exactly what we may think i think that actually comes on when this uh, motor is off that's kind of what i noticed when i worked on these so this is our fresh air intake right it's coming in so this is our filter low airflow so you always want to check your intake and outtake make sure that's clear Plugged. Look at that. Pretty dirty. This is a washable filter. But at the same time, I don't think that's really playing a role now because I got that whole front cover open. I feel some cold air coming in, but if that front cover is open, it's not bringing in fresh air. It's taking in the air from in here. And then I open this cover. We definitely have air moving there. It's on the service, right? On the ignition control itself, there's a reset. So I just reset that, right? No more service light. Oh, there's no call for heat. There's no call for heat. Okay. Oh, it just came on. Vent motor came on. The low airflow thing went off. Let's see what happens. years later it's being energized for a long time is it really is it actually even like lit all right 
just went off. So we got 106 degrees in. I want to see it. I want to see what the flame looks like too. Airflow. Why did this stop? Oh. One, two, three. So one, two, three. Yeah, we got the same lockout. Let me, let me reset this thing. And while it's pulling amps, I want to look at it, see if it actually ignites. Considering we got amps last time, this air switch must have closed. Oh, one amp, okay. So it proved it closed this time, it closed. All right, so we're going through the sequence. It's trying to light and it went out. and no amps it tried but it didn't so what you want to do is isolate this thing i'm going to check resistance real quick really you want to check amps well i mean let's see it said should be between 50 and 80 as far as the manual look it's 140 they say they wanted 50 to 80. So as of right now, as far as the manual, this is out of range. All right, guys, I was lucky enough to find the exact replacement part, OEM. So what I'm gonna do is actually test this before I install it. You gotta be very, very delicate with these things. And what we wanna do is check the resistance the other one had 140 I don't know what the temperature was on it but temperature would affect it Let's see maybe we could just plug that in there for now Let's see if we get a reading look at that 50 ohms and that's what the manual actually said we want 50 to 80 other one was reading 140 let's go ahead and replace this all right so i got the power off so let's go ahead and disconnect this and replace it you gotta be so careful with these things so that's gonna be the one on the right left get a little nervous changing these sometimes because they're so easy to break it's crazy. Do the rest by hand. Let's see if there's any discoloration on it as well. Oh yeah. Look at that discoloration and there's some things on it. look good let's go ahead and get the new one in i'm gonna start by cutting this wires back because we don't have this uh kind of type of connection and this is fine if you do it never really seen a problem just be very careful when stripping these don't want to break that thing you know what i'm going to put it in place and then strip it not forget about this new wool this is for the fireproof definitely want that in there nice and clean be very very careful I'm putting this in you don't and you don't want to even get your oils from your fingers don't even touch this thing Just put it very carefully right 
there. And I always do this by hand, never do this with a drill. So, got that in there nice and snug, gaskets in there. It's gonna strip these wires back and connect it to. Got the new hot service igniter in there got them spliced and when i was checking amps i was checking amps across any one of these two wires just up there because i wanted this cover closed so let's close this up and see what happens all right just turn the power on set my meter to amps let's reset this thing Let's see what happens. Let's see what kind of amps we get. We should get higher amps. Don't have a call for heat yet, but we reset the service light. So it's a hundred and one in and a hundred out. That's because this boiler is working. So when the call for heat stop uh, comes on. It should go through the cycle. There's a specific order of operations before it could even energize this hot surface igniter. So if this hot surface igniter gets power and amps, then it completed all of its cycle and that's pretty much the last step. Well, second to last step, that gets hot, amps, and then the gas valve will open and, and ignite. All right, got amps. Three, oh, you see it's much higher. 3.9, four amps. Got four amps. Everything's good. Oh look, temperature out, 116, 118, 119, temperature's coming up, and look how fast it's coming up. Nice. Wow, that's going up quick. I hope you guys can see that. Oh boy. Liking that right now, man, I'm liking that. I'm about to satisfy already. Wow, that was quick. All right, so pretty much from here, what I want to do is keep an eye on it, stand by, make sure it's good. See the temperature's going up. We've got both stages on, stage one, stage two, we got a light. That's great. The thing is, the filter's on the opposite side, right? And it's supposed to be like the fresh air intake. That's cool, but since this cover is open, it's pulling in air from here. And if you get all that dust and everything is gonna get inside and get this thing dirty. And this cover is nowhere to be found. And then all of these units have this cover missing. So it's still bringing in dirt from there. I mean, what's going on? So these two boilers are working together with this really makes this thing confusing see this is also missing the cover everything's cool with this one pumps are in the back man interesting I would like to clean this filter that's definitely a must but at the same time how much help is it really gonna do if this whole cover is missing I'll take another look around to see if we can find something, but that thing is gone. So, <laughs> so for now, we're gonna leave this at that. And if anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. 
catch you all next time.